Hello, I'm Jason Radebaugh, a technical marketing engineer at Infoblox. Today, we'll look at the Infoblox Terraform plugin, version 2.0.1. First, we'll look at an overview of the Infoblox Terraform plugin. Next, we'll examine the specific resources and data sources which are included. Then we'll look at benefits of using the Infoblox Terraform plugin. I'll provide a demo of the Infoblox Terraform plugin in action. And finally, we'll conclude with a short summary of what was covered. The Infoblox Terraform plugin interfaces with NIOS or vNIOS to provide automation for DNS and IP address management. The Infoblox plugin is available as a provider in the Terraform registry, making it available to use in your Terraform modules. Example configuration files are available at the Infoblox Open GitHub, including examples on using this provider alongside AWS, Azure, and VMware Terraform providers. The Infoblox Terraform plugin version 2.0.1 is verified for compatibility with NIOS 8.5 and later, and Terraform version 0.14 and later. The Infoblox Terraform plugin includes resources that support create, update, and delete operations for many objects in Infoblox NIOS. Network views, IPv4 and IPv6 network containers, IPv4 and IPv6 networks, A records, quad A records, PTR records, CNAME records, and host records. Next available network and next available IP functionality built into many of the resource types provide automation for IP allocation and assignment. Additionally, the Infoblox Terraform plugin includes data sources for IPv4 networks, A, and C name records. Some benefits of the Infoblox Terraform plugin are improved user experience by creating or modifying DNS records in real time, ensuring services are immediately available. Enhanced reliability through automation of IP address management to reduce conflicts and errors compared to manual processes. Expanded cloud efficiency. The Infoblox Terraform plugin is designed to work with cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, and VMware, integrating automated DDI into multi-cloud deployments. Now let's take a look at using the Infoblox Terraform plugin. In this demo, we'll use a few of the available resource types to create IPAM and DNS objects in the Infoblox grid. We'll start by examining my Terraform configuration file. In the Terraform block, I have included Infoblox as a required provider and specified the version to install and use this plugin. In this first resource block, the Infoblox IPv4 network container resource will create a new network container in my grid under the specified network view. The CIDR argument is required for this resource. The comment argument adds a comment to the object. It is available for all Infoblox resource types. The final argument, ext ATTRs, is used to add extensible attributes or EAs to the new object in the Infoblox grid. This argument can be used to define any EA that is available for the object type. It is also available for all resource types of the Infoblox Terraform plugin. The Infoblox IPv4 network resource will create a new network in the grid. By defining the allocate prefix length and parent site or arguments, the next available network functionality is used to automatically find a suitable IP range to use for this network. The reserve IP argument sets a reservation on IP addresses at the beginning of the network range so that these will not be used for assignment. This is useful with cloud providers such as AWS and Azure, where some IPs are reserved for the platform's use. The next resource block uses the Infoblox A record resource to create a new DNS A record. The FQDM argument specifies a name in an existing DNS zone. Using the CIDR argument, the next available IP function will determine an available IP in the newly created network to assign to this record. The TTL argument sets the time to live for this DNS record and is available for all DNS resource types in the Infoblox Terraform plugin. The final resource, Infoblox C name record, will create a C name referring to the newly created A record for a canonical name. Next, let's apply this configuration. I'll start by running the terraform init command in the directory containing my configuration file to install the Infoblox Terraform plugin. 
Next, I'll run Terraform Apply. Terraform calculates the actions needed to apply this configuration and prompts for confirmation. Once confirmed, the configuration is applied and new objects are created in the InfoBlox grid. On the IPAM tab in InfoBlox Grid Manager, the new network container is visible. We can see here the comment and extensible attributes applied to this object. Clicking into the container, we can see the new network created inside. In the details for this network, we can see the reserved IPs and the IP allocated for an A record. On the DNS tab, I can find the new A record and C name record created by Terraform. In this video, we looked at benefits of using the InfoBlox Terraform plugin, improved user experience, enhanced reliability, and expanded cloud efficiency. In the live demo, we used the InfoBlox Terraform plugin to create a network container and network, as well as A and C name DNS records. The InfoBlox Terraform plugin includes resources to create, update, and delete DNS, DHCP, and IPAM objects and is available in the Terraform registry. You can find example configuration files using the InfoBlox Terraform plugin at InfoBlox Open on GitHub. Documentation and other resources are available at InfoBlox.com. For additional questions or comments, you can find me and other InfoBlox experts at the InfoBlox community site, community.infoblox.com. Thanks for watching.